year is not over yet, but we've looked at enough cases now to do a best cases roundup for 2022 and help you figure out what to build in. The Fractal Pop was really interesting this year. The Fractal Torrent was interesting last year and remains interesting this year. We've also looked at things in the past like the TD500 on the cheaper end of things, but now it's time to look at the best cases you can buy today. All across the stack, so from 60 bucks all the way up into the hundreds, and that includes looking at the best thermal performer, the best for uh, mechanical design, and in the case of the Height Y60, the best overall. So let's get started. Before that, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. We use Squarespace for our own GN store and juggle complex multi-piece orders all the time with it. Squarespace makes it fast for us to roll out new products with detailed pages full of galleries, videos, and descriptors. It's also useful for your own resume sites, for photographer or project portfolios, or for starting your new small business idea. There's never been a better time to try and start your new business than right now. And we can vouch that Squarespace makes it easy. Visit squarespace.com slash gamersnexus to get 10% off your first purchase with Squarespace. We'll start with the best overall case that we've looked at this year. The winner is chosen based on overall performance and a strong mix of build quality, unique innovations, and good execution of standard features. This time, we're assigning it to the Height Y60, with a heavy emphasis that we still think the Fractal Torrent, last year's winner of this category, is a fierce and tied contender for the category. The $200 Height Y60 pulls ahead for breathing new life into a design that has dominated the market for years. The Y60 clearly took the Lian Li O11 dynamic design and tweaked it doing more than the copycats out there from Asus and Fantex to provide something new and interesting to the style. The Y60 primarily gets accolades for its extreme attention to detail, where everything in the case was reanalyzed at an attempt to set it apart from the pack. The fans even have a molded H logo in them rather than a sticker. There are also cable tie points for basically every cable path we could find. The rubber grommets are molded and open at all times as a pass-through rather than a deformable type. The PCIe riser cable is customized for color matching and height is stamping its name into the motherboard tray, the rear of the case, and other places in ways that aren't oppressive, but are pretty interesting. All the glass on the case is removable, making it relatively easy to manipulate tubes, radiators, and cables during a build. The case is meant for water cooling first and foremost, but it does well overall with air cooling in the right configuration. It's not the most competitive case for air cooling, but it's close enough and other features outweigh the couple of degrees of inefficiency that you find with the Y60. The large intake at the side and bottom are what allow cooling to remain acceptable, even in spite of the glass. Extra depth in the side mount allows for thicker radiators that offer better performance, and a lower chamber in the floor gives a hidden compartment for cable management, although it does use a little bit too much plastic for the grill, which limits some of the airflow. There are downsides, of course, other than this. The top mount, for example, can't fit radiators as easily as it probably should be able to, and the side gives you a lot more room to work with. Additionally, the case can't support horizontal video cards at all. This is a problem if you're going to stick with an air cooler on your GPU, because modern cards of the 3 plus slot design variety will struggle with thermals given the proximity of the glass. Water cooling won't be a problem, but air on these large GPUs, it will be. Related to this, PCIe access becomes restricted to basically just the GPU, because the riser cable runs over the rest of the slots. There are other downsides too, and you can check our full review for that, we'll link that below. But even with its shortcomings, we found the Y60 to be innovative and to be risk-taking, and those risks, they largely paid off. The next category is for best mechanical design. We created this category years ago for cases that are well-built and designed in unique and creative ways, but don't necessarily get best thermals or any of the other bests in the list. In previous years, we've given this to the Silent Base 802 for its swappable panels, the Dark Base Pro 900 for its invertible motherboard installation as an option, and the O11 Air Mini for its mixed use. This time, we're giving the award to the Lian Li Lancool 3 with an MSRP of $160. The Lancol 3 is one of the most mechanically complex cases we've ever worked with, but not to the level of impressive uselessness found in some others, like the Odyssey X that Lian Li also previously worked on, although that one was a waste of effort. Instead, the Lancol 3 carries forward the multi-paneled approach found on the Lancol 2 mesh previously, but in a more sophisticated way. 
The case is compartmentalized into an upper and a lower chamber. It has two larger side panels and two smaller side panels for a lower compartment. To open the main panels, rather than the old method of first opening the lower mesh mini panels, Lian Li has now designed it so that the entire front quarter panel, we'll call it, flanking the front mesh is a door handle. Pulling anywhere on the aluminum handle deploys a simple lever to pop the glass open. There's no way to permanently secure these panels for transit, which is one of the downsides we mentioned in the review, but it's still a sophisticated and unique solution to something that honestly probably didn't really need a solution, but at least they're trying to do something new. The right side panel opens to reveal doors upon doors of cable management and concealment options, and opening these doors reveals pre-installed lawn Velcro straps for helping secure larger cables. The doors are magnetically sealed, so they'll pop open if cables aren't secure. Also behind the doors, SSD mounts with spring-loaded toolless retention mechanisms are available, and you can lock those in place with a screw if you'd rather than be permanently sealed. This is where we see that Lee and Lee went crazy with springs. It's like they just discovered them and want to use them everywhere. The front of the case has a spring-loaded release lever for the front fan tray, which can be removed and even reversed for easier radiator and fan installation. The depth from the front fans to the front mesh gives a wider intake area, allowing better thermals than when smashed against the mesh because there's less impedance. Other features include three two and a half inch drive mounts in the lower right panel as an option, a fan or radiator mount on top of the power supply shroud, and a movable cable management bar that allows for GPU clearance to be more easily accommodated, or for water cooling tube management. There's more than this, but we'll point you to the review linked below for full details. We had a few fit and finish complaints about the case, like the loose hinge out of the box, though easily fixed, unsophisticated front panel removal, okay. and sometimes needlessly complex mechanisms that leave us uncertain about how long all of these springs and levers will work well. But as far as innovative, industry-leading mechanical design in a computer case, Lee and Lee is the king for the year. The next one is for best budget case. There aren't many options this year, and ideally, we'd like to choose something closer to $60. Budget is always a loaded phrase, since everyone has a different idea for that, but by our definition, it's a $50 to $60 case. We want something that's not so cheap that it's falling apart, like the Zonda O, but not high priced enough to force a build outside of the $500, $600 price class. It's a year old now, but we're dialing it back to the Montec X3 mesh for this one. It's $65 currently, it's loaded with fans, six of them actually, but quantity isn't everything, and it takes an airflow first design with basically everything else taking a back seat. We reviewed this case and found that it unsurprisingly made use of extremely cheap materials like the side panel's audibly thin steel. But it's clear that the cost of six fans on a $65 case comes from somewhere. And that somewhere is the entire rest of the case. Also, the cost comes from the fans because they're only powered by Molex connectors and one giant Molex centipede. Still, it's okay for a simple budget build. The chassis itself uses old tooling, and the interior is plain and without many ease of installation features. The motherboard tray is a simple sheet of painted steel, and there aren't any grommets or advanced cable management features, but again, it'll fit an ATX computer, and it'll be acceptable while doing it. That's about the best you get here. Although it's one of the better budget cases right now, it mostly passes for acceptable against the wider market, and realistically, we'd prefer to choose something a little bit cheaper than this for best budget, but the quality really falls off a cliff right now if you go much lower. The next one is a new category. As prices have gone up across all industries, we've added a tier for best mid-range case. This one goes to the Fractal Pop Air, which is a $120 enclosure that came out this year and aligned with the trend of bringing more colors to PC cases. The Fractal Pop comes in airflow and silent options, but we have a public bias towards performance, so we'll skip the silent option. Fractal's biggest innovation with this case was moving away from this triangular geometry by inventing a new, never-before-seen geometry like this in the pop. The shape has six sides and is almost circular, but it's also kind of square. Because there isn't a name for a six-sided polyhedral shape, we'll coin a new one. Squarecle. The squarecle pattern on the front mesh illuminates well, if lit fortuitously, and also allows excellent airflow through the circular mesh holes within the squarecular six-sided unnamed shapes. Most notably, however, is the pop's revival of the optical drive. 
This case has a magnetic bottom front panel that's easily removed, able to be popped out for easy access to the lower chamber, and also falls off if you pick it up the wrong way. The new Frackle Pop. The chamber houses the power supply at the back and has options for either hard drives or optical drives at the front. And given the limited selection of five and a quarter inch supporting cases in the modern market, that puts the pop in the de facto best case category for five and a quarter bays. But that's not why we have it in the lineup. The case also does excellently for thermals, given the overall simple nature of it at least, and it would be fine for out of the box use with the standard tower cooler. Color is applied well and offers another reason to select the case with its black variants in orange, green, purple, teal, and full black for the secondary colors. And other options include full white. This is one of the top cases in the price class right now, but if you'd rather buy something else or something larger, we have a strong runner-up recommendation for the NZXT H7 Flow. NZXT finally got back into more modern design. And the H7 Flow provides a relatively standard building experience, in a good way, that is, with average thermal performance for $130 at the price. For alternatives, check out the Quartzair 4000D and 5000D Airflow variants. Next up is Best Out of the Box Thermals. Fractal returns with the Torrent for this one. The $190 Fractal Torrent came out last year, but cases don't age like silicon does. It's still usable. It remains one of the most impressive cases on the market now, and it's managed to land as best thermals for two years running now in our benchmarks. And last year, we also gave it best overall. The Torrent's average CPU temperature under a full system load was just 41 degrees Celsius above ambient, keeping it at the top of the chart all year. And that's the stock configuration. For GPU thermals, it's not a technical best, but it's the best balanced of the options nearby. The torrent is within a few degrees of the top, and it manages better CPU thermals with a more significant weighting than its competitors here. The torrent is able to excel in thermals this way because of its fan layout. Two large and unencumbered 180 mil front fans allow the system to perform as well as it does. All the while offering a look that differs the torrent from the pack of now common mesh front panels. 140mm fans also aid in performance, and customization even for water cooling builds makes the torrent seriously worth considering for anyone who can fit it in the budget. We used it for our recent editing system build, and we even found 180mm radiators to put on the front. This is the type of case that can last for multiple builds, and on the current market, it's without equal in terms of thermals while maintaining high build quality. For those interested in the torrent but trying to spend less, consider the torrent compact as an alternative. For many ITX, they also have a Torrent Nano, but we haven't reviewed that one. Best Noise Normalized Thermals is up next. For this one, we're looking at the top performers when the total system noise level is matched at 36 dBA at 20 inches distance in a 26 dBA environment. The Landcool 3, the Fractal Torrent Compact, the Torrent, and the Landcool 215 are all at the top of this chart. Mostly, it's between the Fractal Torrent Compact and the Landcool 3. The compact has the benefit of being smaller, meaning the distance from the intake to the CPU cooler is less, and the air hitting it is cooler and higher velocity. The Landcool 3 mostly benefits from just having perforations everywhere. Both do well here. If you wanted to go for an air-cooled build with as low noise as possible, any of these top five cases would set you up well. Even the Cooler Master Half 500 isn't a bad starting point, but the price has been entirely untenable. Speaking of, worst trend for the year so far, there's always time, we'll go to rebranding old cases as new. This is something normally reserved for GPU makers, but this past year, Cooler Master showed us that even case manufacturers can take something that was previously launched, give it a new name, and change basically one small thing, and then ship it for $50 more. And they did that with the Half 500, coming out of the H500 previously. The base tooling is the same as previous cases, the features are largely unchanged, and the price has increased significantly. In fact, they've even removed a few things we liked. There was a time when the base tooling and the original model of this case was $100. But as we enter rebrand territory, we're long past that. So that finishes up the best cases for 2022, at least, that you could buy right now. We're going to keep reviewing cases through the end of the year, of course. More will come out, but we're mostly through the bulk of it. Things like the Focus 2 we're interested in looking at, we just haven't gotten to yet. There's at least one case that hasn't released yet that we're aware of. So check back for more as always. But for now, at least, as you look at building an RTX 40 or an AM5 or whatever system coming up, we've given you a good set of options. And then, of course, there's also more unique cases, like the cute pet one or this.
So that's it for this one. As always, subscribe for more. If you want to learn more about each of the cases we looked at, including all the downsides for each one, check out the reviews. We've linked those and the playlist for case reviews below. And as always, you can help us out directly by going to store.gamersnexus.net. Thank you for watching. We'll see you all next time.